reviews, discussions, and theories about films and horror, sci-fi, and genre, this is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Horror Deconstruction. You'll find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Hit that thumbs up. Let people know that you like the show and share us if you can. We've been doing this for a long time and nobody gives a crap. With yours, Comp. And this is 31 Days of Horror for October. The film we'll be talking about today is called Hall. Not the very sensitive uh, cough suppressant, but Hall, 2020. When a debilitating sickness spreads across a long hotel hallway, a few scattered victims fight for survival and try to escape from the dark, narrow stretch of isolated carnage. Directed by Francesco Giannini. Written by Derek Adams and Francesco Giannini. Story by Adam Colundi. Starring Julian Richings, Carolina Bartzak, Kathleen Fee, as well as Yumiko Shaku. So I had seen the trailer for this film a while ago, not too long ago, and I wasn't sure what it was about. Essentially, it's called Hall. The trailer was people dying in a hallway, and I thought this was maybe to have been about some airborne virus that you can only catch in this hallway, like some sort of a very sectioned off disease that you can only catch in this pathway. And I didn't know how, I mean, it looked interesting, the trailer. And I didn't know if it was, like, people trying to avoid this hallway. I was like, that's a very bizarre premise, but I'm in for weird premises. But that's not the case for this film. It turns to be a sort of standard boorish uh, infection film, quasi-zombie movie. And it starts out with a family driving off um, to another destination because they believe they're trying to escape said plague. It's an abusive dad. You don't know that yet, but you do find out he's an abusive guy. Uh, with his wife. His wife is played by Carolina Bartzak. This movie sort of has two protagonists, uh, but not really, because one sort of goes in the leeway. It actually starts out with somebody sick, dragging themselves across the hallway, and you are repeating that scene over and over, very boringly. Uh, it literally is like just watching someone struggle on the floor uh, for up to five minutes at a time. You know th these people are immobilized because of this disease, this phantom disease that's out there. And the woman is just struggling on the floor. She's pregnant. She's this Japanese woman played by, uh, like, Yumiko uh, Shako. She's very good, playing Naomi. And she's just dragging herself on the floor. And you're just sort of watching this woman drag herself on the floor. And I don't understand what the point is. Like, we, we understand that this woman is in bad shape. She's in bad standing. These people are all wheezing. They can't really move themselves. They have this sort of black... Uh, veins that appear on their face and ex other extremities and it just seems like a very unnecessary cut to sequence because we've seen it it's almost like if Jason were to slash the same person and then it cuts to another uh, uh, another part of the movie with people going dialogues and it just cuts to him slashing at them about three or four times throughout this whole film it's, there's no point to it you've seen it once you understand that you're going to get slow and it's, it completely slows the film up so the film is really nicely filmed. It's got great acting in it. Uh, Carolina as Val. Uh, I, I don't know why I can't think of her husband's name. The, the husband is really good. He's an abusive piece of crap in this movie. Uh, he's a very good actor. I don't mean he's a good character. He's a good actor playing him. He, he seems He's very uh, subdued in his role, but he's very menacing. Um, and he's not an over-the-top villain, and he is believable in that sort of sense of those abusive guys that sweet-talk their woman into believing them again. Uh, even the little kid that uh, plays her daughter kind of reminded me of the girl from the Poultry Guys, the same haircut and everything. Uh, she like she stepped out of an 80s movie to be in this one. And um, the other side story is the uh, Naomi character, the woman that we had seen struggling at the beginning of the movie. Uh, she's this Japanese woman that ha also left an abusive relationship in Japan. Well, she's in America for business, but we think that she's been chased and she has a conversation with her mother in Japanese. And it's funny because having watched, having watched a lot of Japanese material, like you can tell s certain words don't match certain things <laughs> when she's talking to her mother. And uh, so she's left an abusive husband and her mother's begging her to come live with her again. All the while, there's a mysterious illness that is affecting the United States or wherever these people are. I don't even know if this is a Canadian film, honestly, I can't tell. And um, so these two split stories, but the the Japanese character already, uh, um, Naomi, she gets sick immediately and then it leads to, it's it's like, it's, you see that opening of her sick and then it goes four hours b before and then it goes to the family stuff. So we're sort of stuck, we know what Naomi is, so there's no sort of surprise what happens to her character. So we're led to deal with Val's character and her daughter, and Val's trying uh, secret, trying to escape her abusive husband. 
And it just seems like a lot of melodrama for no reason. I mean, the scenes are really well acted, and the intensity between them is good. It's just that the whole thing will be cut up between uh, sequences of of the lady dragging herself on the floor. And it's just like, well, what's the point of this? There's, I, I know what this is. It seems like they only had a budget for a hallway and two or three rooms, which they use. And then they in, introduce uh, a part of the storyline where there's a guy who is the guy who's been in, who's spreading this infection. He's this guy who says, we're going to save the world with this infection. He's talking to his wife over the phone. So he's the one introducing this um, toxin. And I guess he infected everybody. Maybe I, it doesn't show how he did it. I assume my guess is that he put it on their door handles or something. That's that's the only way I can guess he did it. And so these people, he got sick in this hotel, and he just kind of walks through these crowd of people who are dying and turning to into zombies. Because there's like some weird zombie bar where a guy tears out the throat of another woman in this cheap fast forward effect. And I was just like, what is this? Like, and then the the little bit say I'm spoiling so I mean like I don't think this is a film that's like worth rushing out to if you if you're if you're curious about it maybe you might be interested uh, I don't know if I want to spoil it too much um, but there is like a zombie thing going on here it's not really like the living dead too. it seems to be like a zombie effect from the the sickness um, and Val struggle and then there's like some weird phantom effect that happens with the little girl and her dad where she's hearing him do you know you don't understand why she's hearing this voice and it's like it's a very bizarre film it really is shows its budget uh when they try to get out of their rooms and do other things because it seems like they're very limited in what they can do it's like the the hotel didn't know that they were renting out the the hallways for this movie or something like that and i think that it's not it doesn't work together wholly as a film it this could have been a great short film for about 15 minutes with all those stories condensed into one short story. But as the film stretched out, you need a little bit more, especially introducing this. Uh, it's suppo- It seems like it's going to lead on to a bigger storyline with this guy poisoning everything. But there's no, there's nothing that happens with him. He just leaves the building and there's nothing else with that character. And so you just sort of have this villain that walks in and does this and then leaves. You don't know why he's poisoning these people. You don't know why he's spreading this disease. You don't know why this disease is going to save the save hundreds of thousands of lives or millions of lives and it's just pointless like Naomi's character is she's very sweet and she's a pregnant woman I guess she's supposed to feel extra bad that this is happening to a pregnant character but but it's pointless what happened to her it's it's pointless in the storyline I guess you're supposed to feel bad for her but then she's already sick by f- like five minutes into the, the ten minutes into the movie and and Val maybe you can kind of root for her but like it's just long extended scenes where these people are like tiptoeing through this hallway of dying people and it's just like who gives a rat's ass it's just unnecessary and and long takes for no reason so it it makes the actually good acting and good camera work and good production design it all the like the slow editing and pacing really takes away from the the actual good parts and it doesn't seem like there's much more than surface material with this movie which sucks because you know, you have all the good elements of something that you can do with this, but they just didn't have the budget, or they just did not feel like going further into the storyline. So, who knows? I don't know. Do I think it's a recommendation recommendation for a film? Not really. If you want to see something that looks production-wise okay, but as a film, there's nothing in it that is new. There's nothing in it that is really grasping and making something original with the idea of a sickness or zombies or anything like that. There's no actual zombie attack besides one, and it's not even like flesh biting. It's like a guy tearing out somebody's throat. And it comes out of nowhere, and it's supposed to be shocking, but I was just like, oh, okay. Well, whatever. And the ending is always supposed to be that thing where it's like, uh, oh, oh, oh no. It's sort of one of those type of endings, and who cares? And I really don't care. I'd, I'd spoil the film, but since I do these on my own, I'd, I'd rather people make their own uh, decisions about their movies and what they want to see from them. Myself, I give this maybe a 5 out of 10. Uh, leaving Japan to, uh, to uh, get a better life and be cool, but then you end up being zombified. And with that, this has been the Horror Deconstruction. Thank you for listening.